transistor radio in your lounge room. It's the entertainment loop that the whole family can enjoy. G'day you wonderful people, how are you going? Welcome to the stream. I'm just some Aussie gamer, otherwise known as Brycell. If I sound like I'm speaking slightly weird, it's because my mouth's on fire, because I accidentally put a little bit of scorpion chili sauce in my dinner that I'm still trying to finish. <laughs> uh, I thought I just thought it was a normal chili sauce in the fridge, because it's unlabeled, it's just in a specific bottle. And um, yeah, I'm um, regretting it a little bit, and there's a lot of saliva going on, and yeah, it's just hot. <laughs> it's really hot. It's delicious, but it's hot. So if you uh, if you think I sound weird, that'll be why. I also have no idea what's going on with my drone. Since the uh, latest world update for New Zealand, uh, my drone no longer works with my Xbox controller, which is fun, because now I have to try and figure out what uh, the keyboard controls are for. So I will endeavour to fix that, but that's uh, why you would have seen all the, the new jumping around like a, you know, madman uh, at the start there whilst I was trying to figure out what the hell the drone actually does and what keys do what if that makes sense but uh, anyway whoa boy I'm just getting a bit aggressive with my hands almost sent me food all over the keyboard that would have been a great start uh, before we go any further I actually need to turn the fans up in here because uh, I don't know if it's hot in here because of the sim or it's hot in here because I'm eating something so spicy yeah. <laughs> All right, that is a lot better. Uh, we're going to be witnessing drooling, says William. Uh, no, it shouldn't be that crazy. Like, it's hot, but it's not, you know, I've got a pretty good chili tolerance. Uh, I think it's more just because it's the first few bites and my mouth's just like... <sighs> Holy damn! Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll get better as we go on. Uh, first thing I'm going to try and do here is sort out the camera uh, views. There we go, that's better. And then second thing I'm going to do is jump over to the chat and see which of you wonderful people have decided to join us this evening. So first up, we have Mr. Leaded Rapier 709 Wes, mate, welcome to the stream. For those of you who aren't aware, Wes made a last-minute decision to actually join us in a drool stream. You'll see a few uh, comments down from his evening comment. He's got a link there to his stream as well. Do obviously go and check out the stream from his perspective too. He is flying the Kodiak, the Quest Kodiak. Um, so something very, very different to the Caribou, obviously. But Wes, welcome to the stream, mate. Sean Dale, good morning, mate. How you going? Welcome to the stream. Hope things are wonderful over in your part of the world. I am doing well. Continue to fly for free. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's possible. Um, flying free, however, because now I've actually read your comment properly. Um, yeah, I've been, you know, doing a little bit of this and that over New Zealand. I, I, won't, uh, I won't lie. It's, uh, they've, they've done a very, very good job with the world update. Um, Mr. Midi37 is here, he says his good old fashioned greeting which is remember to like and subscribe ladies and gentlemen make sure that you do listen to Midi because he's a man of wisdom and he knows exactly what uh, everybody should be doing. Wink wink nudge nudge, you know? <laughs> but uh, Midi, g'day mate, welcome to the stream. Hope things are going awesome in your part of the world. 
Uh, Mr. William Kelly is here. G'day, William. Again, so g'day to you over on Brett Stream. But I was a little bit in and out of Brett Stream setting up for this one, so I may have missed anything else that you said to me. But hope things are doing well for you there, William. Uh, yeah, hope life's treating you with, you know, at least some sort of respect and gentle, you know, <laughs> none of that. Hey, come here, boy. <laughs> nah, all good. William, mate, I hope things are fantastic. Glenn, mate, I've, uh, I've been chuckling, uh, I must say, a little bit to Glenn's dad jokes and puns that he's been dropping in the chat. He's stolen my job. Glenn, mate, welcome to the stream. He says, what's the difference between a reindeer and a caribou? A caribou can't fly. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> can you tell I've been eating chili? Getting the, uh, what's it called? The like, you know how you, there we go, but I'm just, the uh, phlegm in the throat kind of thing. Although that might be a combination of the chili and the fact that the voice is not still 100%, but as you uh, can all tell, especially those who are at the stream, when was it, a day and a half ago that we did that stream? You'd all be able to tell by now that the voice is very, very much more improved over uh, what it was in that stream. Not that that's difficult. Uh, Mr. Beluga on PC says, yes, 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 I'm here. <clears throat> okay. Well, everybody, I think Beluga's here. Um, I, I don't know why I'm getting that feeling, but it's just, you know, something in the room. Um, yeah, it just gives me that feeling that Beluga is here. So Beluga, if you are here, mate, g'day, welcome to the stream. Hope things are fantastic in your part of the world. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. Glenn <coughs> says, why was the caribou wearing the disguise? He wanted to remain anonymous. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Very nice, Glenn. Very nice. It's almost like we're going to have to be playing this uh, quite a lot in this stream if Glenn hangs around. Uh, Sean says take the AM225. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, for a challenge, sure. Uh, <laughs> if, if anyone's game enough to take the AM225, uh, you know... I'd like to see it, honestly, especially on some of these places we're visiting tonight. Not even the caribou can technically fit in them. Uh, and it's pretty good at fitting in most locations. Whoops, I'm losing control of the chat here. <clears throat> um, oh, is that another one from... Oh, there we go. There's another one from Glenn. <clears throat> he says, why did the caribou marry a Canadian? They really caribou each other. Yes. I'm not sure whether that deserves a third drum and cymbal. Uh, that one was a little bit cringy, but uh, you know, nonetheless, Glenn, that's why you're here, that's why we like you, that's why people like me, I think, <laughs> is my terrible sense of humor as well. So, you know, between you and I, Glenn, we should be able to uh, really get the chat groaning by the end of, uh, by the, end of the stream, hopefully. Uh, who else have I missed? Ah, Mr. HasXR. G'day, mate. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing bloody awesome. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure to have you on board. I know a lot of my streams recently have probably been too late for you because of my work uh, commitment. So it's really, really awesome to see you here in the stream. Has Hope things are going fantastically. Uh, William says, I have a pretty sweet man cave. So, William, the background... Don't take any notice of that. It is what it is. It is literally a background. Uh, it is AI generated. It doesn't actually exist. Trust me when I say that, that my room does not look anything like that. <clears throat> uh, Glenn said, a friend of mine ran out of chili powder, so she substituted KN, tripled it to make up for not being chili. I feel like that might have been a mistake, Glenn. <laughs> Especially seeing as uh, KN is quite hot. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, good luck to your friend, and I, uh, I'm hoping they're still alive and they survived that ordeal. Uh, where, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Hey, Mr. Gaming Wombat is here. G'day, Gaming Wombat. Hope you're doing fantastically, mate. Welcome to the stream. Uh, have I? I <clears throat> Sorry, the, uh, the good old chili doing its thing. I think that's the thing to get Gami's channel up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are here, you haven't checked out what Gami Wombat does. He's not doing a huge amount of flight sim right now, but if you like SnowRunner, if you like Battlefield, if you like uh, Captain of Industry? Is 
that what it's called? Don't quote me on that one, Gami. But that sort of style of game, you'll like what Gami uh, has to offer. Go check him out, see what he's all about. <clears throat> yeah, so unfortunately, has XR, they just don't have a livery for the Royal Australian Air Force yet, but I'm sure somebody on flightsim.to will sort that out. Oh, that was a while ago. My bad, Gami. My bad on that one. I know you're doing uh, a lot of snow runner and mud runner and all that right now. I just cannot for the life of me, and, and Battlefield as well, I think I saw you doing on a stream, but I cannot for the life of me remember what other things you're streaming right this second, which is really, really pissed for on my behalf, because I tend to watch all of them. <laughs> so, yeah, that doesn't uh, bode so well. But anyway... If you like what uh, I'm saying about Gami, go check him out if you haven't already. <clears throat> uh, Mini says, I do nothing. <laughs> Mini, you study, mate. You study. You need to make videos. But you have little time in the day. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I only stream these days, Mini, because it's all I really have time to do. What do you call an intelligent caribou? Brain deer. Oh, for God's sake, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one that one definitely deserves a symbol. Now, if you'll excuse me, I just need to get rid of the uh, chili that's running out of me bloody nose before it actually comes out on stream and you guys get to all witness that wonderful, wonderful liquid uh, draining. I'm sure you don't want to see that, so we'll uh, avoid that. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this in the Caribou. But as you can see, with the scenery that I've got here at Lake Tekapo, which is where we are, by the way, we're at Lake Tekapo, which is uh, not far from <coughs> uh, Mount Cook <laughs> here in uh, New Zealand. As you can see, we've got the Mount John Observatory. We've got the, uh, well, the Tekapo Power Station, the Church of the Good Shepherd, and we've, whoa, what we've got is some serious stutters. That's definitely what we've got. And we've got, I think we've got something else as well. But um, I don't know if we're going to be able to actually see those things close up in the caribou. And I was hoping to utilize the drone to be able to see those items. But obviously with the fact that the drones decided to not work with my Xbox controller anymore. Means that uh, that's not even a possibility. So we'll just, uh, we'll fly out of here like... Uh, crazy people and hope for the best not that I'm trying to claim that I'm not a crazy person I most definitely am first things first though I think I noticed something before in my scenery settings that is going to be the reason why we're getting such terrible uh, frame rates because DLSS needs to be on balanced because we're using uh, aftermarket scenery all right cool so, let's get in the cockpit of this thing. We are already running. I think everybody who's flying along is ready to go. Better turn on the track IR. There we go. Very good. All right. Whoa, what's with the... crazy frame drops? What the... I wasn't getting this when I flew the caribou earlier on. I wonder if this is the uh, scenery that we're at. It doesn't seem too bad as long as I'm not throwing my head around like a madman. We've got uh, Cool Cat and his Savage Cup. We've got uh, Wes in front of us. It looks like we've got Glenn holding short of the runway there in his caribou. Now, I can only do so much with reading the chat here, ladies and gentlemen, when I do have the uh, track IR on. So if you do comment in the chat, do bear with me. You'll, uh, you'll, you'll know when I'm reading the chat because the whole I'll look over to the left side of the aircraft. <laughs> Now, I don't know if anyone else uh, who's flying along today is using this uh, scenery. It's a freeware scenery from flightsim.to. Wes is heading on out, making his way out. You're not getting that, Glenn? 
Have you got the same scenery uh, package that we've got? See, technically the caribou technically shouldn't even, be, that's a lot of technicallys, shouldn't be operating out of this airport uh, based on wingspan and all that width. But you know, sometimes you just gotta, uh, what do they say? I think I said it before in Brett's stream. Sometimes you just gotta lick the stamp and fucking send it. So that's exactly what we're going to try and do here. Uh, whether or not we actually <laughs> succeed, uh, at all these airports is very, very, very uh, much open to, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens when we get there. Uh, I don't think it's a default. Somebody, uh, somebody let me know. Is this a default handmade airport? I thought I was, like, I know I've been running a scenery for a long, long time. Uh... At Lake Tekapo in New Zealand. However, maybe they, maybe it is part of the scenery, and maybe that's why I'm getting such. Uh, maybe that's why I'm getting such uh, bad frame rates because I'm trying to run two sceneries on top of each other. But uh, you got the Mount Cook scenery as well, Glenn. Yeah, myself as well. Uh, and I've turned off my Orbex mesh. If you haven't turned off your Orbex New Zealand mesh, highly recommend doing that. Um, it stops all the random pop-ins with the scenery when you get close to things. Uh, come on, caribou. Oh, this is actually quite a long runway. I thought this was a short takeoff and landing plane. Nothing about this takeoff is short takeoff or landing. Oh, it's because me throttles stopped working again. Good, good, good. Me throttles have stopped working again. Here we go. They're back. They're working again. They're working again. I know it doesn't look like they're working again, but trust me, they... Ah. You can see, like, I'm moving the... Right now, you can see the throttle thing's not moving. I'm moving the slider. And then... Oh, there we go. It's working again. This is an issue I've had. Uh, wow. Why are we struggling so much to get up in the air? I had no problem flying this thing to uh, get the thumbnail. What the? All right, hang on. Something's not right. Something is not right. Something has gone terribly wrong. I mean, other than the fact that we've just taken out 500 million bushes, something else has gone terribly wrong. Okay, radio. I can see it now. It's all good, guys. It's all good. I got it. I got it. There we go. Now my throttle's actually working. I was like, why isn't it going all the way forward? All good. Luckily, we're in a short takeoff and landing plane, so this, uh... We should be able to get off on this rough area. Just disregard the first part of this stream. There we go. Come on. Come on. That's better. Much better. Aha! We are up. Right. So, I can only assume that the reason why I didn't have a problem taking this thing off when I took the thumbnail is because I took off from the runway directly. The aircraft was started. Whereas I did the startup 
on the ground there at Lake Takapo whilst I was watching Brett's stream. So I can only assume that's why I uh, missed the gust lock. <laughs> yeah, it's my uh, it's my eye tracker uh, has, which I am now going to turn off for the moment. Because it legitimately follows every single movement I do with my head. And that's great when uh, you're trying to land. Not so good if you're just trying to do a stream. So there we go. We've got the church down there. We've got the Tikapa. The Tikapa. I'll try that for a third time, shall I? The Tikapo A power station. And then we've got the Mount John Observatory over here as we make a involuntary left turn. It's almost like the caribou was designated for NASCAR. Do you need any gadgets for it? So HazXR, the, uh, the track IR is a little infrared thing. I've got a little uh, receiver on the top of my monitor. And I don't know if you can see it on the hat, but I've got little infrared things on the hat. And they just basically track the location of where I'm looking. And then it determines that within the sim based on my head position. Lots of simulation games support it. Racing games, truck sim, they're all supported by uh, Track IR. There's also Toby or Kobe or Toby or something tracker as well. So directly behind us there is Lake Alexandria and then Lake Tekapo as well. And we are heading directly towards Lake Pukaki. Is it costly? Uh, so HazXR is very lucky one of my viewers actually sent me their old Track IR when they upgraded to VR. However, I believe Track IR is on the expensive side. I believe it is. Uh, three or four hundred dollars uh, Almost at the point where it's oh, it, it may not be that expensive anymore, but I know it was when I got mine uh, gifted to me um, I don't know what the price the Toby is the Toby might be better price wise But uh, if it's still that sort of price honestly, I would just invest in VR Yeah There you go, Toby's US 200 plus, so it's almost worth, unless you're streaming, because obviously it's very, very hard to uh, stream in VR, I mean it's possible, um, unless you're streaming, I would recommend saving the extra money and getting VR. So what I'm currently flying towards here, I don't know, I'm hoping it's going to be relatively well put together in the sim, but we are now we are now flying directly towards a uh, one of the filming locations of the Lord of the Rings. So uh, this is the Hobbit film, uh, or Hobbit film should I say, Lake Town location here on Lake Pukaki, so I don't know if anyone's uh, big into Lord of the Rings or uh, the Hobbit film, uh, but if you remember a turquoise blue lake, well, this is where it was. Lake Pukaki.
Don't get a dirty mind, Mini. It's not Lake Punani. It's Lake Pukaki. Uh, VR doesn't... <clears throat> I don't know how to word this. It doesn't require a powerful GPU, William. But it's recommended for the best experience, yes. You can definitely VR on, you know, a 3060 or whatever, but don't expect to run the sim at high settings. Uh, spelling? P-U-K-A-K-I. Uh, no flight plan says... Yep, correct. Mini, correct. No flight plan says Sean. There's, uh, a, there is a flight plan in the Discord. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and these names are very much a uh, grade schooler's dream. Um, I, I kind of am, Sean. Like, I, I will be for most of the stream. I'm just not for this bit because there was no marker in the sim to fly over the Hobbit film location. But there was in little nav map, so I figured oh, I'll just make the slight detour to begin with. We're now turning to head towards Glen Tanner Airport here, which uh, we do have a scenery add on for, I believe. We have climbed a significant amount though, so. Um, don't know how successfully we're going to manage to achieve this, but anyway. The biggest problem with streaming VR is that any... Same with track IR. Any head movements, any jerkiness, straight away it uh, it shows up in the stream, um, which is fine with track IR because you can turn it on and off and remove it easily and uh, you know get on with it. VR not so much because you I believe you have to load up a VR program and everything and you sort of get set up in it and then it's a bit of a process to you know continuously on and off that. Uh, I got the Mount Cook scenery on Marketplace, uh, William. I didn't realise it was also available on the NZA simulation site. says permission to make this already not PG stream even less PG I mean I think you already answered your own question there Mitty these streams have never ever ever been PG in their life so I mean why not just continue uh <laughs> yes, Mitty, of course I'm familiar with that. Is that the next movie you want to film out here, is it, Mitty?
<clears throat> oh, chili in the back of the throat. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> We're at the point now where when I put the, uh, the spicy noodles in, the, uh, I can't feel the chili increasing. So that means we've, uh, that just to give you an idea of just how spicy it is, the, uh, <laughs> the taste buds in my mouth have actually stopped feeling the capsaicin <laughs> because we've reached such a level of, uh, spice. <laughs> Understand, uh, Midi, why you were like, hang on, what, Lake what? <laughs> yes, Lake Pukaki. P, P. <laughs> P for Peter, not B for uh, Bravo. I still can't even see the runway here. Oh, yes, I can. If I go to the exterior view, I can see the runway. It looks like it hasn't been properly ploughed. Oh, I already, I already had that thought uh, when I was setting up the stream, Mitty, but I was just like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe no one knows what it is. <laughs> and then Mitty's like, oh, <laughs> opportunity. This thing, uh, for such a big uh, cargo thing, I guess it is a cargo thing, it uh, flies really slow if you want it to. Which is a good thing because uh, some of the airports that we're flying into today, oh my we're going to require all the brakes. We might even need to uh, pick up a spare set of brakes and uh, get a brake change halfway through this flight to give you an idea of what sort of stopping that we're going to be doing. Yep, they do. Uh, I'll try and get a view for you. Look how low those flaps are, all the way to the end of the wing. They're almost like halfway down to the landing gear. Okay, that's insane. <laughs> there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There's a display of just how quickly you can stop a caribou. And there's Glen Tanner Airfield. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, back it up the runway and off we go. It has BTA mode, you think? 
Yeah, I could have almost made that first turn off. That's exactly right, William. I mean, yes, Mitty, I know it's a stole plane. I know it's a stole plane. Um, a legendary stole plane. But uh, supposedly so is a BAE 146. Now, for a jet passenger aircraft, that's a fantastic stole plane. But this, this competes with like bush planes. Probably, ooh, ooh, oh, has XR. Now's probably a bad time to tell you that I've successfully landed the 787 at um, Sabah, but yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, as, um, as Gami did drop down in the stream chat. If you do have a spare screen or a tab, throw Wes up. There we go. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> you can have a look at the stream from his perspective as well. Um, yeah, as I said, has XR. If you like, um, so it's got scorpion chili sauce in it. So, um, if you like uh, chili to the point where your mouth stops feeling the capsaicin, then yes, they're fantastic noodles. Um, otherwise, not recommended. <laughs> All right, let's uh, send it out of Glen Tanner, shall we? And head on over to, I think we're heading over to Mount Cook next. Oh, you do like some spice, has XR. Okay, well then, yeah, you probably really like these noodles. PC, he's just passing Portugal in the 737 Beluga. I'm going to assume that you mean in the sim. I think you're not actually talking to us from the seat of a 737 passing Portugal. But, I mean, based on previous conversations with you, anything is possible, really. How come Wes and I aren't in VC? What do you mean by VC? Uh... Has. Are you going to try and tell me now that we can actually, like, dual cockpit the same aircraft? I know it's been a while. I talk since July. Oh, you are in the, you are in the sim. Okay. Voice chat. Actually, that's a great point, uh, Hazexar. I'm not sure. Honestly. Uh, would you like us to be? Let us, let me know. Uh, hang on. Is there a way for me to... Probably not a way for me to set up a pole whilst I'm trying to hand fly this thing. But uh, let me know down in uh, in chat if you would like Wes and I to be in group chat together or not. All right, so we're going to make our uh, way to line up with Mount Cook here. As you can see, below us is the Tasman River. Well, it's not much of a river right now. It's more like the Tasman Ice Rink, but, you know. You've never been on a 737 with Wi-Fi, Beluga. Pretty sure all 737s in Australia have Wi-Fi. Somebody uh, correct me on that if I'm wrong, but 
That's probably got a lot to do with the fact that it's such a massive country and, you know, to have a flight that's less than 90 minutes is pretty, uh, pretty uncommon. So, ladies and gentlemen, are we uh, are we jumping into a voice chat with Wes when we get on the ground here in Mount Cook? I'm leaving this one up to you guys, because you are the ones who first said, why aren't we in a voice chat to begin with? So do let me know in the chat if you'd like uh, more than one person conversing or... Good idea from William, has says yes please. As long as I equalize the uh, voice volumes, yeah. So that's why I'm saying I'll do it when we're on the ground here at uh, Mount Cook. Oh, I am nowhere near lined up with this runway. I'm also very, very quick. Might be worth putting the landing gear down. Too busy watching the chat, and I'm not actually braking for the uh, taxiway areas. Whoops! All right, we're going in on the left here, and we'll come back out around on the other side. <laughs> there goes Glenn in his caribou. He's gonna basically try and touch down at the end of the runway. He'll have no problem stopping. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mount Cook. Um, also, a get. I guess that's a you know. <clears throat> Could be a name of a uh, adult film, uh, you know, Mount Cook. Perfect introduction for Brett to come in uh, to. Uh, to which Mitty says, G'day, Brett plays viewers. Why doesn't YouTube tell me when I'm getting raided by another channel anymore? It happened a couple of times that it said, Oh, this channel's coming in, and now I just get nothing at all, so I don't even know when it's happening. But hello to Brett Plays and all his wonderful viewers. Welcome to the stream. As I said, we have just arrived at Mount Cook. Uh, we will be heading off in a sec. Uh, to answer your question, this is called Earth by Tilden Park and Zavi Rusan. <laughs> It did tell me. There we go. It's just popped up the thing at the top of the chat now, Brett. It's just said, Welcome, Brett Plays and their viewers have just joined. But uh, g'day to everyone who did come across from Brett Plays stream. Hope you are doing fantastically. Apologizing uh, for the uh, delay. On my end, for some reason. Yes, so William, it's a legitimate raid. YouTube has uh, a thing, it's not called raids, it's called redirects. 
Um, yeah, right, before we go any further, I need to get into a voice chat. And then make sure that my voice and all that is all aligned with Wes. Alright, testicles, testicles, 6969. Balls, 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 9696. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know if that was good. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Alright, All right, I'm relaying back to you. Right, you're back now. Uh, Mr. Dale's going to join us as well. Okay. Chat. No worries. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I might be back. I'm not sure if I'm back. Don't know what happened there. Everything yeah. was fine uh, on my uh, end. Yeah, you're all good. Um, That's strange. That was really strange. My... Yeah, we'll see how one I got. Let's have a look what else I got on my list. That we can... Bam. Uh... stream might be back but Need to set up to receive raids, whether I was able to do it to Bryce or not you. You'll need to go into up in your YouTube account and I can't find it on Google how. Right, I'll have a quick look while I'm waiting for Bryce uh, to get back going. So thank you for that. Alright. Testing. Uh, trust my channel maybe? You guys can I do see the movie, the delay the there, guys. and all that. Let me know. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to jump back into chat. So how do I turn on range? Seem to find it. Is he back? I think he may be back. Oh, well, hopefully this work he is working for him.
Yeah, I don't wanna slow down, I don't wanna slow down, I don't wanna slow down till I burn out. I just wanna live fast, I don't wanna look back and say I could've done more than I did not. Sometimes it can be hard, yeah, it can be hard, yeah, it can be hard when you go. I'm not um I'm not waiting necessarily for anything to happen here, ladies and gentlemen. The problem I'm trying to figure out now is that my internet connection has gone all skew if and I'm continuously getting warnings from YouTube Studio and Twitch going you're not uploading enough data, you're gonna get dropped frames and stuff like that. So now I'm trying to figure out how to sort that out. <laughs> but if you guys can hear me, everything seems to be moving in a good way. We'll just YOLO it. Excellent connection. All right, let's continue, shall we? My God, I have no idea what happened there. All of a sudden, Streamlabs just started acting up, and then Streamlabs wouldn't behave, and was just throwing all sorts of uh, spanners in the works. But it seems that taking off the virtual green screen, because there's a lot of scenery for my GPU to... Uh, process right here right now and I think that was the catalyst the fact that my GPU just needed too much GPU to also perform the stream <coughs> with the virtual green screen so something had to give well now that we've turned off the virtual green screen and you guys get to actually see what my room looks like nothing like the background picture that I had everything seems to be running smooth again and I think my GPU Oh my god. Uh, no, I didn't drop anything, Brett. That's the one thing I didn't do is I didn't, because I know it works. Yeah, now the GPU is using about 50 to 60% as opposed to maxing out. So literally it was the green screen with the amount of scenery um, that it had to try and process and it just wasn't enough. You'd think it would be being a 3080, but there you go. Anyway, let's go, shall we? <laughs> uh, you don't want to give me any flaps, Caribou? Oh, come on now. Please don't tell me that all my keys and all that are not registering properly in the sim. Yeah, green... Well, it was fine uh, for all my other streams, Brett. But yeah, I, I as I said, the fact that I'm running so many uh, aftermarket sceneries in this part of the world, plus the fact that it, we've got the map update, which has, of course, increased the uh, scenery in the area as well, I think I actually just got to the point, yeah, where my GPU was like, I can't do any more. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay, so can't use the green screen with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Fair enough. That's just more motivation to get that back wall behind me and all that sorted out with all the LED lights and shit that I want to get it sorted out with. It was amazing as well that it was opening up Discord that uh, really cooked it for some reason. Yeah, with ATS and ETS, no problem with a virtual green screen. So, yeah, I just got to keep that in mind. If I am running a lot of in a very scenery rich area, I actually can't run the virtual green screen. 
unless I finally pull my finger out and build a streaming rig. But uh, it's very, very hard to justify building a streaming rig when you're only streaming once or twice a week to, you know, 15 people kind of thing. As much as I'd love to, I don't think Flight Sim has enough of a following for me to uh, actually make that sort of investment at this point. So as you saw, off to the right hand side there, we've got the Tasman River, which is kind of the Tasman ice uh, rink at the moment. We'll make our way down this valley. Hey, Swift Fighter, mate. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're going really well, mate. I think I noticed you jumped in before, just before we had all the technological issues. Glad to see you're still here, mate. Yes, well, it certainly has been for me, William. It certainly has been for me with the GPU issues that we originally had with the 5700 XT, and then the power supply issues, and... Yeah, you see, Brett, I don't even have enough bits and pieces to uh, put together a full streaming rig without spending money. And as I said, it's very, very hard to uh, justify spending money on that. And this, this, this is gonna, there's no way I can word this to not sound fucked up, but it's not meant to. It's very hard to justify spending five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars on the other parts that I need to do a second streaming rig on top of the second hand parts I already have when we get 10 to 20 viewers on a stream because it's flight sim. There you go. Oh, did you? We've just had all sorts of tech issues. All sorts of tech issues. Oh, cheers. Is that it? Hey, look at you go. Where are we flying to today? We are flying around New Zealand. Flying right over Cooker Lake, one of your favourite destinations. Cooker <laughs> Lake is one of your favourite destinations, is it? Yeah, good time around that door. No, it's around Mount I mean, that's very true, Brett. That is true, but, you know, you can see it from my perspective. I said, like, right now, all of my spare money is reserved to put a house on the block of land. So, to then somehow find, you know, between $500 and $1,000 to put together a uh, secondary streaming PC just doesn't seem like a... Uh, smart financial decision at this point. So I think it's just easier to remove the green screen when we uh, fly in the sim and then once the house is built and my setup is all set up in there then maybe, then maybe we invest in a uh, streaming rig, you know? It'll certainly stop any of the uh, tech issues from happening, that's for sure. Cheers. I appreciate it. Yeah. 
Where is she going? Ages ago. It's been open for months. Really? Yes. Ah. It's called Toby and Terrible Tupac. Right. <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a great man. I like to say that I'm a Toby the Terrible Tickler. Yeah. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the uh, name that Jai has given to the uh, fake person that lives in our manhole. Toby the Terrible Tickler. <laughs> Right. It's so good. Don't lose your bank account at Hooker Lake in Mount Cook. Yeah, I think Jai's got a pretty good chance of losing his bank account there. There we go, we have the Empress Glacier down below us here, ladies and gentlemen, as we do try and make our way up Mount Cook. I don't know if the, this thing has the climb performance to get us up towards the peak, but uh, we'll keep trying here. Famous last words. Sorry guys, but those tech issues have just absolutely uh, frazzled me. I don't even know what to say anymore. Oh shit, we're stalling. Okay, alright, I understand plane, I understand, I understand, I apologise. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think the caribou is actually meant to go that high. Fuck <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Mount Dampier, we've got Mount Tasman. Down there we've got Plateau Hut, and that's the Plateau Landing Zone just down there as well. So if you take a helicopter tour to Mount Cook, uh, that is where you will land. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna go very, very close here to Mount Tasman. I wonder if this mountain was named after our uh, fellow streamer there, Mr. Brett Plays. Because he is a bit of a Tasmanite. This is, uh, I must say, it's a very, very nice part of the world to look at. Should also see if we can... <laughs> Anyone want to see me try and get the caribou down in the plateau landing zone? That can be the uh, that can be the landing challenge for this evening's stream. Get the caribou down in the plateau landing zone. In fact, I'm just going to do it.
Oh, it is Garland. It absolutely is, mate. I'm about to, uh, about to, uh, I don't know if you got the last little bit of, but we're about to try and put it down here at, uh, in the plateau landing zone. You might climb Mount Aspiring in New Zealand with your dad. Oh my god. Don't try and look at the chat and, uh, and fly. That doesn't go very well. Don't even know if we're going to be able to get this down in time. Can land at almost any place. Yeah, 59 mile per hour stall speed. Jeez, this is for a, for a plateau landing zone. This is not exactly uh, flat. Well, you can see there's a helicopter up here right now. They're probably wondering what the hell's going on here. Why is there a car? Oh, yeah, that was good. Oh. Well, we can definitely land. Anybody else feel like attempting that one? Yeah, it's a helicopter landing zone, Garland, for those who want to come up Mount Cook. Yeah, it's always, that's, that's, um, that's the way you go about it, Mini. You put the reverse thrust on in the mid-air. Didn't you know that? It's a new, uh, new technique the pilots have been using recently to uh, help slow them down. Glenn's given it a good shot, but, uh, oh no, I thought he was going to clip the mountain there, but no, he's good, he's good. Glenn might have this here. Swift Fighter's, um, going to die. <laughs> R.I.P. Swift Fighter, we need to stick a flag in the side of Mount Cook. There we go, Glenn's down. Really, Con well, I guess Concorde's not exactly a normal plane though, is it, uh, Garwin? Alright, so let's see if we can actually taxi this thing up a bit here so we can uh, have a shot at potentially getting back up in the air. Yeah, and it had no flaps as well. Brett, is that how you land Concord in your stream? You activate two reverse thrusters. Okay, this thing's trying to take off. Come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Come on, caribou. 
Oh, we might have done fucked up here. <laughs> no, we can go this way. Good. Right, let's get a uh, let's get a momentum takeoff here. Right, she's going to be a very rough departure. doesn't it? <laughs> Star, you got put in here because you were being an annoying B-I-T-C-H to everybody else. You know it's always a good departure when uh, when you do the fly past the departure area or the runway or whatever and you're actually at a lower altitude than you were when you took off. That's always confidence inducing I'm sure for the pilot. So we're going to head up uh, the middle of this glacier here. I don't know about you Garland, but I don't really like feathers in my caribou. So off to the right there we have Malte Brun, uh, which I'm assuming is just the name of that particular mountain, or that peak. Is it possible to wheelbarrow the caribou on a touch and go? What, like nose gear wheelbarrow? Touch and go or what? So we have the Tasman Glacier landing zone here for the helicopters. We're not gonna try and attempt another landing down there. We've, uh, we've done one landing zone, that's enough. <laughs> There goes somebody in something. I know that was really, uh, really well detailed. I can try, Mini, but I feel like that's basically going to be impossible. But I'll give it a go. I know what a wheelbarrow is, but it could also be done on the rear wheels, yeah? Like, that's still technically wheelbarrowing if you flip your wheelbarrow around. It's also a much easier uh, way of doing it. <laughs> oh, you can see the helipad for the uh, Tasman Saddle Landing Zone down there. Oh, glad I didn't turn too far left then or we would have been uh, a bit stuffed. So what we're going to do is we're going to round this peak, then we'll come round to the left, we're going to go uh, over 
Franz Joseph and Fox Glacier. Uh, those who are familiar with New Zealand have probably heard of those two glacier names. <laughs> Very nice, Swift Fighter. Very nice. Do a barrel roll. Military team did it for a display on a YouTube video. You know, what are we? I, I've obviously missed what we're talking about. Yes, I understand it's not an actual wheelbarrow, MIDI, but like when you think about wheelbarrowing in an aircraft, would the first thing that comes to your mind not be, oh, he wants me to keep the front wheel in the air? Because that's normal. Um, Swift Fighter, we were originally going to probably land at Franz Joseph Airport, but due to the uh, due to the half an hour delay with the tech issues, I may not because we've got quite a lot of airports to get to, and most of them have got scenery add-ons. Once we get past Franz Joseph and Fox Glaciers, so unlikely. You're more than welcome to. You're in an F-117. You've, you've, you'll leave us for dead. You can basically do a lap in New Zealand in the time that we make our way down to Milford Sound here. So, wheelbarrowing is the correct terminology for wheelbarrowing is balancing it on the front wheel during a touch and go. Right. Okay. Um. Fair enough, I guess. So there you go. Down below you there is Franz Joseph Glacier. Now, this is a part of the world that I have actually walked up to. Uh, IRL. Not, not to this bit, obviously. I was young at the time. But uh, I have done the bottom walking track part, which I believe finishes somewhere down where you can see that second flattened out area. So you start down at Franz Josef Airport and you make your way up. There are videos of wheelbarrow takeoffs. Run. If, uh, if I'm ever in an aircraft that does a wheelbarrow takeoff, I'm going to politely ask the pilot to GTFO. <laughs> No idea, Garwin. I just, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> no clue. I don't know what I'm running from, but yeah, yeah. Imagine flying a plane and pushing the nose down for takeoff. What? There you go, there's Franz Joseph Glacier in all its uh, glory, and then 
Actually, it might be... Yeah, no, it's definitely... It's either this little flattened area or that flattened area where the general public walks to. And then, obviously, the actual glacier starts. And unless you're an experienced uh, climber, they don't necessarily let you do that. And then, just off from there, over there where that little unlabeled waypoint is, is Fox Glacier. That is your, ah, oh, there you go, that is your soundboard MIDI. I know it's not exclamation mark MIDI, but it is your soundboard. Dropped her head. likes to turn to the left. Do I watch Sydney Gaming? No. Sydney Gaming? No, I haven't heard of them. Uh, Claw, sorry mate. Hey, BLTV over on Twitch. Someone's streaming the boo. It's a Christmas miracle. Damn right it is. <laughs> it's a bloody Christmas miracle. Ho, ho, ho. And a bottle of rum. You're licking. I'm trying to fly here, Star. TV. Oh my god, Star, you could not make this any harder if you tried. God, the dog hair every time I do that is just yeah. There you go, BLTV gave her a gave her a quick kiss on the forehead. I do that all the time. All right, so our next uh, stop is going to be Haast Aerodrome, uh, and I believe that there is a scenery add-on for Haast Aerodrome. 
somewhere down over there. We must have uh, uneven fuel burn or something because this thing keeps wanting to turn to the left. Star, what are you doing? And when we do get to Haast Aerodrome, ladies and gentlemen, I will need to go and put my washing in the dryer so that I have some bed sheets to sleep in tonight. Which is why my bed looks like it's half unmade, because it is half unmade. Do I have rudder trim or aileron trim? I don't believe so, uh, Beluga. And I also wouldn't even know where to look in this thing because there's so many gauges. It's all right, if I'm not focusing on trying to look after a dog at the same time as flying, we should be good. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Shondale says, thank you for a great time. Need to do physio and get all loose again. Oh, oh, la, 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 la. I don't know where I, where I was going with that, Sean. Uh, take care, everyone, and hope to fly again soon. No worries, Sean, mate. Thank you very much for jumping in the stream and the flight. Appreciate you. Also, massive shout out to you for hanging around uh, during the tech issues. Appreciate that as well. Are the fuel levers like mixture levers or condition levers? Do they have a full range or detail? I have no idea, William. This is the first time I've ever flown this plane. I'm sorry. I yeah. I, I am unable to answer. <laughs> Rudder trim is in the middle of the overhead console. I don't know if that did anything. doesn't look like there's any uh, rudder trim, it's just dipping to the... It could in fact be my joystick. This thing's had a hell of a workout over the last couple of years. And there has always been a bit of a centering issue with Thrustmaster TCA side sticks after a while. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's just, you know, where we're at kind of thing. You're getting a lot of CTDs, Wes. What scenery or aircraft do you have installed that is causing that? Spitfighter says, how do you stay up this late and not be tired for work the next day? Swiftfighter, my good sir, I don't start work until 10 a.m. That's, that's basically how I managed to do it. Which means I don't need to wake up until about 8.30, 9 o'clock. Which means that even if I go to bed at, you know, 1, 1 1.30 in the morning, I'm still getting a solid seven hours of sleep. So that's how I managed to do it.
so many people flying around New Zealand these last few days. It's really, really awesome to see, uh, actually. And I mean, you can see why, like, it's pretty crazy. Uh, not yet, Brett, no. Uh, just been, you know, flat out. Doing all the things that I am unable to do throughout the week. And obviously just doing behind the scenes things for setting up the streams and all that. I actually forgot to take a look at it. I will, uh, I will do that before the next stream. Because, uh, I wonder if that might also help with the... Uh, GPU green screen issues possibly, hopefully, maybe, touch wood. Oh, we had a bit of a stutter there. I was like, oh, we're going to have a CTD. But no, we're good. We are good. Stop. Hold on a sec here, ladies and gentlemen. Bear with me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to end the stream there. Sorry. Uh, yeah. 